don't I look like the absolute epitome of virtue and readiness to receive the divine to you? No? Well, that's actually kind of weird because I could not be signaling more virtue even if I were the Virgin Mary herself. Let me explain. Content warning. The following video contains mentions of sexual abuse, rape, murder and otherwise violent endings of lives. So if this distresses you or in any way upsets you, maybe this is not a video for you. If you are, however, very acquainted with the violent lives of medieval saints, then by all means, go along. This video will also reflect values given in a very binary and patriarchal system. Something which, well, you know, I am not quite a fan of, but it is the context in which I have to talk about these symbols. So let's go for it. Before I get into my explanation, I want to know of you what do spindle and distaff signify in your religion or your culture? I am just genuinely curious. So tell me down in the comments. Let's get started. Let's just jump straight in. This video is inspired by my recent travels to the southern part of Europe where I came across a couple of saints with a spindle and or a distaff. Which got me thinking. Is a spindle or a distaff some kind of symbolism for something? Uh, well, we're talking Christian art. So, yeah, of course it is a symbol for something because symbolism is literally just our spiel. That's what Christians do in their art, symbolism. So while we might consider a spindle a part of everyday living, it was a constant and indisputable signifier of female virtue. The spindle and distaff are first and foremost, as I have hinted in the beginning, linked to the Virgin Mary. It mirrors Mary's unwavering faith and devotion. Mary's acceptance of her role as the mother of Jesus is seen as the epitome of humility and the spindle serves as a reminder for that. And the distaff as accompaniment to the spindle represents the importance of the preparation and the readiness for God's work. In Marian depictions with a spindle and a distaff, it is quite often, but not always, but quite often, the Annunciation. So the moment where the angel tells her, hey girl, you gonna get baby, but there will be no human father. Oftentimes she is depicted in that moment spinning and this is a reference to i think I'm, I'm not quite certain i'm a church nerd but i'm not the all-knowing um, that it is a reference to the to the pseudo gospel of thomas in which he said that she was spinning to weave a new cloth for the temple of jerusalem um, which of course in itself is just symbolism to the max a new cloth for the Temple of Jerusalem. You're getting it, you're getting it. Like you could say her womb almost is weaving a new cloth for the Temple of Jerusalem. The earliest known um, depiction of this kind of Mary Annunciate spinning is actually from the second century. So even in Roman times, the spindle and distaff were seen as symbols of female virtue. It was not uncommon to see like bridal shower gifts, well, the Roman equivalent of them, with depictions of Mary spinning. And this continued up until the Middle Ages, especially in Southern Europe. So whenever Mary is shown engaging in spinning, this highlights her humility, her patience and her readiness to fulfill God's plan. Just virtue, signaling virtue everywhere. The Virgin Mary is not the only saint 
that spins. And here we kind of get into the gory stuff. Um, and this is what inspired this video in the first place, are like the smaller, more local scenes that are shown with a spindle or a distaff. And the first one that I personally came across on my travels was Saint Solange. And Saint Solange is a local French saint um, in the Cher region. She's not venerated actually outside of that region, so it's super local. And her story goes that she was a shepherdess and she had promised herself, promised her virginity, her virtues, you know, everything to God. But there was this local count, local duke, I don't know what he was, but anyway, he was madly in love with Solange. Um, but, well, she was like, uh, no dude, I promised myself to God. And he didn't take no for an answer. He kind of just tried to rape her. And when she knocked him off his horse, um, he cut off her head. She then picked up her head and then walked for another, I don't know, eight kilometers. And when she dropped dead, uh, that's where they started building a church. Now, she is depicted with Spindle and this staff, not only because she was a shepherdess, I mean, logically, she would have been, but also because of her virtuousness, of her promise to God. And, well, she is patron saint of shepherds but also of rape victims and rain. Another local French saint that I have personally come across and did not actually need to research for is Saint Germain de Cousin. And luckily, while her story is, yes, it is as sad actually, but it's not as gore. Um, Germain Cousin was a little bit of an outcast and especially outcast by her own family and as was a lot of time the case outcasts get turned into shepherds this is the thing we also see in the gospel of the birth of jesus the shepherds that visit him are the outcasts if you want me to do an entire video about why this is important to christianity please tell me so but anyway back to germaine and germaine was especially outcasted by her own family especially by her stepmom but she was regarded as a very virtuous woman, once again, a very God-fearing woman who went to church every moment she could. But she was a shepherdess, so she had sheep. What she did was she planted her distaff in the field whenever she went to church, and all the sheep would just remain there, like good sheep. Some other saints that I personally didn't know, but after researching, I just want to blah, 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 all this information on you is there are some medieval depictions of Eve spinning though it is unattested in Genesis that Eve spun wool it is deeply ingrained in medieval Christian art like this 13th century psalter more to the east of Europe because I have stayed quite southern right now is Elizabeth of Hungary. She is often shown holding a spindle as a symbol of her humility and her devotion to serving the poor. Elizabeth was a 13th century princess known for her charitable works and the spindle is a reminder for her willingness to perform menial tasks to care for the poor. In the same genre is Saint Clare of Assisi, whose depiction with a spindle is actually not well known and I had to search really hard for it to find one, but I read somewhere that she, she was depicted as that, like that as well, so I, I dug hard and I found one. Um, again, the spindle represents her commitment to a life of poverty and menial tasks for helping the poor. And the sisters, the, the poor sisters of Claire, I don't know how you say this in English, the Clarisse, also spun to um, be able to support themselves. One that is not quite humble is Saint Gertrude the Great. She was a Benedictine nun and whenever she is depicted with a spindle or distaff, this represents her dedication to prayer and contemplation as well as her devotion to Christ. 
And I think let's get back into the gory stuff. You also have Saint Agnes of Rome, who is frequently depicted with a spindle or distaff. She was a 13-year-old girl in the second century who was raped and then violently murdered with a sword. The spindle is depicted with her as a symbol for her purity and chastity, as Agnes was one of the very first saints that chose to remain celibate for God. Now, a small tidbit about Agnes that is local to me and I find interesting is that the Beginage Beginage? Beginage here in uh, in Saint-Ron, in Sintrade, is the Saint Agnes Beginage. Um, and she is, once again, shown with her spindle. Now, she is in Sintrade depicted with her spindle for a very specific reason. Because it is said, it is told, it is the legend that the circumference of the Beginage was measured by how many meters of yarn she could spin and then she or I don't know it probably wasn't Agnes herself because she was of Rome but yeah maybe an apparition of Agnes could spin and then that thread was laid around and that was how big the beginage should be where all the buildings would have been built now these are all female saints naturally, as spinning yarn was supposed to be a woman's passing of time, a woman's work. But I could find one male saint where the word spindle is used to describe something that is often depicted with him. But it is not this kind of spindle. It is a kind of spindle that pulled out his intestines. <laughs> well, I thought as we're nearing Halloween, why not end this video on a very gory story, the story of Saint Timo. Anyway, as said in the beginning of this video, I am very curious to know what spindles and distaffs represent in your culture, in your religion. Let me know in the comments. Let me also know if you like this kind of talkative talking head video about a very nerdy um, topic that is especially close to my heart. Also let me know if you didn't like it, but then please be constructive in your criticism. <laughs> and well, all that there is left for me to say right now is if you like these fiber shenanigans then maybe you could like, comment or subscribe. But of course that is all up to you and as for me, I will see you in a next video. Bye! Thanks Bernadette for lending me your distaff for a while.